are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS podcast listeners. In this episode, we are talking with Ini from Nigeria, and he's going to tell us all about studying at North Carolina Central University. Now, if you are aiming to go to a prestigious university abroad, such as North Carolina, um, or somewhere in the UK or Australia, or maybe Canada, then you're going to need the IELTS more than likely. And the best place at the moment, I can honestly say, to get that IELTS exam is IELTSpodcast.com. You just go there, go to the top of the page, and you'll see our essay checking service that we recently launched. And there you can submit your essay. And using our fancy new software, you'll get an estimated score. And you'll also get insights as to what to do to correct the essay that you submitted. We're getting some massive success with that at the moment. It's been a real hit. And also at the moment, when you sign up, you can also get a um, 30 minute class with myself included uh, for some ridiculous price. I can't remember exactly, but that's a new promotion we've launched just to get students started. Right then, let's jump into today's tutorial. Welcome to the podcast, Ini. Could you tell us a bit about yourself, please? Yes, thank you so much for having me on. And uh, a li brief introduction about myself. My name is Inyabong Obot. Um, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I did my undergrad degree in um, Nigeria and Ogun States in a, in a private university called Bagpok, um, where I studied banking and finance. Um, upon completing my undergraduate uh, education, um, I decided that I wanted to pursue a master's degree. And so I started applying for different uh, programs and lucky enough, I was able to get admission into uh, the Masters of Business Administration program at North Carolina Central University. Um, I got into the program in 2019 and graduated with my master's degree in, sorry, I got into the program in 2018 and graduated with my master's degree in 2019. And for some reason, I decided that I wanted to pursue another master's degree. Um, so I went back in in 2019 and graduated in 2021 with my second master's in information science. Interesting. Wow. So you've got two masters. Yes. <laughs> um, one, one of my, um, can't quite say what pushed me to it, but it's a decision that I have learned to be I'm so happy I did. Um, yeah. Both masters and you know being in the United States have put me in a much better position than I would have been with just the first one. So I'm very glad I was able to do that. That's fantastic. And um, this is a long shot, but have you spent time in London before? I could hear a bit of a London accent. Oh yes. So my I have um and I, I didn't mention it. I have um three siblings, an older sister and two younger. Uh, brothers, my older sister actually studied in the UK. Actually, she went to the University of Northampton, so I stayed with her for a while. Um, sometimes, okay. most of the time, I lived in Milton Keynes, and sometimes in New Addington. So I've been I've been around. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because I could hear some. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a Southern English uh, sort of like accent there with uh, when you introduced yourself. <laughs> and so you decided to do information science, right? Yes. Gotcha. And are you working in that now or are you still studying? Yeah. So um, during my last semester um, of the information science, I applied to different organizations and I was um, successful in getting a job with an investment bank, which I'm currently doing now. This is my second year working with the bank. So oh. I work in the IT department of the bank. So in a way, I was able to bring all my degree because my undergrad was banking and finance. I have my MBA and information science. So I was able to bring all the degrees together to get the job I currently have now. Genius. Wow. I guess it's because it's so specialized. I guess uh, it's easier to find a job, no? Yes, but all during COVID, so it wasn't as easy as it would normally have been. So it just took a lot of um, ap applications, a lot of trying to get more certifications and a lot of interview interviews to finally actually get one because this was a period where um, 
uh, the world was moving online, moving to working from home, and yeah. some companies were not really hiring people. So it was it was hard, but at the same time, the amount of effort I put into it, I am very happy I was able to get myself to that position too. Well done. Well done, in your bomb. That's, that's super. Tell us a little bit more about the effort you put in. Like, did you have a system set up? Yes, actually. Um, and I was actually talking about this to one of my friends a couple of days. So um, moving into the United States and funny story about me coming to the United States. Uh, my flight landed on a, a Friday night and my first class was on a Monday. So my actual <laughs> first intro in here, my first introduction into the United States was in a classroom. Um, <laughs> so it was it was completely different. Um, you know, different surrounding, different train of thoughts with people. So yeah. having to adjust adjust to the United States in a classroom was different. But immediately I decided, okay, I tried to create a plan because um, I was living in a different city from where I had school. And I don't know if you know anything about the United States or North Carolina specifically, you would know that um, without a car, it, everything is so far away. Yeah. Um, so I was living in uh, Raleigh, which where I am now. I'm in North Carolina Central University is in Durham. Uh, taking the bus, it's a three to four hours journey one way and the same amount of time backwards. So my train of thought was right, that three hours that I spent in the bus why don't I make the best out of it and read during those three, three hours? So for five days a week, I was putting in those three hours of study every time I was on the bus, which helped me a lot. Um, another thing was reading on the bus wasn't as easy as, you know, just saying it. It's because you have to also try, find a way to block out the noises that you hear. So yeah. I also incorporated um, some weekend study um, you know, create some time. I turn off my phone. Turn off like I. I would basically unplug every electronic in my room. Yeah. And just um set up the time and with the clock and say, okay, I'm going to read from this time to this time. Um, when I started doing that, it was very hard for me, but eventually I started getting into the groove of it, and that really helped me a lot because um coming from even though I've lived in the UK for a while, but coming from Nigeria, the system of education is yeah. totally different from that in the United States. So um, it's, it really took a lot for me to be able to adjust into it, especially, wow. yeah, and especially coming with an accent. Um, and that's, uh -huh. that's, that's, that's something that everybody needs to also consider in the fact that you know, you're coming to an accent and you're coming to a class where um, for some people, and right now might be rare, but some, but for some, for some people, this will be the first time they are hearing someone with your accents yeah. in person. So I've been able to understand that. Um, I was lucky enough where, um, in my first day of class, I had uh, our cl uh, classmates who family was from who was, who was African, but he was born here, so he was used to the accent and he understood it. So I would be in classes and a professor would ask a question and I would answer, but the professor wouldn't understand what I answered. So <laughs> he, 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 yeah, um, he would have to say, no, no, this is what he meant. And it took, it took a while, but I was also able to adjust to that and the way to, you know, dilute um, my accent a little bit so that they can understand me. But the good thing about I've seen with, you know, being in a classroom, especially, you know, our universities, that that effort that you put in for people to understand is not just shared by you because people also put in efforts to understand you. And which is something I'm very happy about being here is that it wasn't just one way for me. Mm -hmm. Other people put in efforts to understand me because, like I said, you know, came in on a Friday, I had a class on a Monday. So first time. <laughs> I so, totally yeah, um, I totally understand the any like the amount of effort I put in to dilute my accent when I were first went abroad, you know, I was just I was in Australia and I was like, I'm speaking the same language as you guys, but you don't understand a single word. And yeah. I was completely unaware of my accent. And 
Yeah, but fortunately, the Aussies, um, you know, they took it in good stead. And eventually I managed to dilute it. But then when I got back home, everybody said, whoa, what happened to you? You sound really posh now. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> but um, can I just tell, ask, uh, like, yeah. what's life like in Durham, North Carolina, and at the university as well? Life there, it's, it's really, I would uh, I think the best way to put it is it's a, it's a new experience, or it was a new experience when I first came because everything was different. The people was different, and you know we, especially in America, people talk about diversity a lot. Um, for me, when I look at diversity, I don't look at you know the color of the skin. I look at the diversity of thought, the way people think, and that's one thing you're going to. That was the first thing I saw that um, the diversity of thoughts that exists was different from what I knew. Um, mm, interesting. Um, like for for example, um, you know, back in we call short knickers, and I think to do the same in London, um, in, in the UK. But so that again, year, sorry, you you cut uh, out. Oh, sorry, I said uh, back in Nigeria where I'm from, the shorts that you wear, um, we call it knickers. <laughs> right? That that's right? the female underwear in the UK. Yeah, see, and for us, that's the male shorts. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. So being over there, being over here and using that word and people would look at me like, what are you talking about? Or uh, <laughs> cookies and biscuits. Yeah. Right. So for, for us, what American we, we got to as cookies is biscuits to us. So that differentiation, uh-huh. being able to understand, that, okay, no, this word means something else for them is is really something. Um. But yeah. for Durham, Durham is a very, very beautiful place. Very, very nice place. There are a lot of nice people there. And people are always interested to talk to you and know, like, where you're from, especially when someone hears your accent. It will always come and meet you. Hey, where are you from? Are you, when, <laughs> how long have you been in the United States? How do you like it so far? And that's one yeah. thing I love, I love about it because everyone is always asking me, how do you like it so far? What's been your experience? Where have you been? <laughs> um have you have you tried this have you been to this place oh you should go see this you should go eat this um, so, yeah that's that's something you're going to get a lot especially in durham and that's that's just so so amazing yeah and why did you decide to study at uh, nccu north carolina central university um so that decision actually was when i was applying to different schools um at the time, my parents wanted me in a state where they knew someone. And so mm. my mom, yeah, my mom's uh, sister actually lives in this state. So this was one of the states, this was the main states we considered. So then looking for various schools and good thing about North Carolina is home to a lot of universities. So we had a lot of options. Um, so looking at the various schools, we applied to several, and uh, one of the ones where I got the admission for was NC State, then mm. or N sorry NC Central. Then looking at the history of NC Central, it's home to a lot of um, it's an HBCU, which is an historical black college and university. So that was one driving uh, driving push towards going there because yeah. it was. Um, the culture and the tradition within it, I wanted to experience that. And so that was why I actually ended up picking um, NCCU. That's interesting. And what do you like the most about studying uh, there? You finished studying, right? Yes. Or you, uh, yeah, gotcha. Yes, okay, what did, yeah, what did you like the most about uh, studying there? Um, I think one of the best thing I like is, Oh, one thing I know amazed me the most is the conferences that we um that the school took us took us to because um from day one what you will see is the program is especially when I was in the MBA program um from day one they're not they're not just focused about you um you know succeeding in the program they also focus about you succeeding after the program so one thing that was embedded in our curriculum was um going to conferences, going to career fairs. So they would actually um, pay for us to go to different career fairs and, um, you know, train us in what we need to do in job interviews, just prepare, prepare us for the outside, for life 
after college. Right. Um, that's one one thing I loved about NCCU. That's one thing I know I know they do. I, I love that they do. Um, that's from day one. They start preparing you for that. That's really interesting. I was on a call the other day with um, um a, a guy from an AI writing uh, company uh, for personal statements. And he said that one thing that um, he does is make sure that the uh, be, he makes sure that the personal statements are similar to the sort of like Anglo-Saxon ones where they are kind of like a little bit more selling, you know, and I know that from other, for some people coming into this culture, the Anglo-Saxon culture, the selling themselves is quite difficult. So I guess this is kind of like, I imagine what the NCCU preparation was, you know, like getting you prepared, yeah. and job ready and how to sort of like, you know, communicate your, your advantages. But what was your like biggest takeaway from this career training they gave you? I think one one thing I took away from the from the entire career process was that um, most time people look at you know the big companies as this is where I want to go. Um, but they one thing they did was they made us understand that um, yes, these companies are the top companies in the world, but doesn't mean that these are the top companies when it comes to work life balance, when it comes to career aspiration. And those are things that you should, um, they made us understand the certain things we need to consider, not just how much are we going to make from a company, but what is my work-life balance going to be? Um, what's my ability to grow within this company? How is that going to look like? So mm-hmm. it just, it, it makes you think that, okay, yes, I want to work at Google, Amazon, Apple, but yeah. am I going to have a good work-life balance? Am I going to be able to grow? What does the next five years in the company, what is that going to look like? So they made us think about that when applying and choosing for jobs. So that's one thing I know I, I would always take away from that. Interesting. Very interesting. And okay, while you were there at NCCU, did you get any did you get involved in any extracurricular activities? Oh yes. Um so one thing, uh, one thing I I was very happy I was able to join is I joined the student body at NCCU. So I was um, the vice president of the Graduate Students Association. Um, also did a lot of events. I attended a lot of conferences. Um, I am a big bike. I love riding bikes. So I did a lot of. Um, we have we had some events with bike riding. So I did that a lot. Um, I love uh-huh. going on hikes. Yeah, I love going on hikes. So did did that also in school. And <laughs> one good thing about NCC is that whatever your hobby is or your activity is, you would always find a group of people that share that similar interest with you. So once I found those people, which was always okay, when do we? When are we doing this? Okay, how do we plan for this? Let's go do this. If we wanted to go to a conference, and which is something good about the school is in that is that um. So, for example, I had a few friends of mine and we wanted to go for a conference, which is not a conference that the school usually goes for. So we brought up the case and we went to talk to the dean. And the dean was like, if you can find a reason why or uh, find an educative reason for going here, we would pay for it. Wow, so, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. So um, that, that's that's one thing I really love. And, and I tell people a lot, um, NCCU, great school, definitely go there. Um, because people people are really to listen to you. They mm. want to, yeah, they want, they, they just don't want to be the one telling you what to do. They also want you to bring up um, ideas of what you can do. So um, I really just try to involve myself in as much different things as I, as I, as I could. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was uh, mainly in the uh, Graduate Students Association. I started working as, I first joined them as a Senate. Then I became the director for professional development. Then I eventually became the vice president of the association. Wow, that's a good progression, isn't it? That's fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Ine. Thank you. Um, now, just before we finish this up, we've got a lot of students in Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, everywhere. And what would you say to them who are looking to study in the U.S.? What would be your advice to those students? I would say that um, one thing to keep in mind is that 
um, things are going to be different from what you're used to. And don't take that as a bad thing. Take that as a good thing. It's a, a, it's a possibility to learn. Mm. And also, I'll say I know that right now, because of COVID, um, even though we're in the post-COVID era, um, a lot of schools are still trying to catch up with the admission process or, you know, catch up with uh, the applications. So even if right now you have not heard back from any school, don't let that discourage you. Um, just keep applying and mm. eventually eventually you will hear something back. And using myself as an example, um, I started applying for admission, I believe, in 20... Uh, yeah, I started applying in 2016 and I didn't get my admission until November of 2017. Um, right, so, okay. Yeah, and this was even before COVID, so I know that, yeah. you know, some a lot of people would have applied a lot of time and they haven't heard anything back. So just be patient, just keep on doing what you're doing. And yeah. um for most schools, they're going through a lot of backlog right now. Because I know I've I've really heard that a lot from most schools. So um just have patience and you you would, you know, the admission. But once you do, just come with an open mind, which is the best thing you can ever do. Come with an open mind, come to learn, come to grow and come to enjoy. Um you know, the experience that you're going to get from, you know, schooling in any school in the United States, not just NCCU, is going to be amazing. Uh, you're going to learn a lot of things. You're going to experience a lot of things. And yeah. you're really going to be happy that you did. Great points there, Amy. And just, um, I asked you before about your system for applying for a job. And we kind of, I think we got distracted. Because uh, oh, you yes. said that you had a whole system in place to get the job where you landed, where you ended up. Could you just t- yes. tell us a bit about this uh, system you had before we finish, please? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so one main thing was um, I told myself this every single day I was going to apply for at least five jobs. Um, wow. And I can tell you, the, yeah, I can tell you the amount of rejection letters I got, but I didn't let that stop me, which is one of the most important things is that. Um, you are going to get a lot of rejections, but don't let that discourage you. Like, regardless of the amount of rejection, I had a time, and I, I make a joke of this every time, um, where I was applying for, I applied for a job, and as soon as I was finished, in less than five minutes, I got rejection from that job that I just finished applying for. Ouch, ouch. Yeah. Oh, man, um, I'm so sorry. But I love yeah. this rule. This um, I've talked about something similar before, the rule of five. Like, I don't know, if your goal is to take the exam like every day you'll do five actions that will you know put you in a good step yeah Yeah. get you closer to getting the IELTS exam so yeah completely agree with you there great work and I guess it took a lot of discipline as well and as you said tenacity I mean getting that rejection rejection letter five minutes after applying is just brutal I'm so sorry about that Amy (laughs) Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm I'm not working in a place I love, so um, it's it all led me to this. I always one thing I've always say is um, I we learn more from our failures than we do our success. So when you apply for something and you get a rejection, just go back and look. Most of the time, um, you can actually reach out to them and say, hey, could you provide some input about why I got rejected for this? And yeah. some people will respond, some will not. But I use that to improve my resume. Up until Genius. the point where it was able to, yeah. So that those are things you can actually do because, especially working online, sending emails, the worst anything anyone can tell you is no. Some people would just not reply, and but that's not going to do anything to you. The ones mm-hmm. that do reply are what are going to do, you know, what you're going to be happy about. So even if you get a rejection, if you can, you reach out and ask if you can get any reason about why you got rejected. Some people would have had, and this was actually happened to me where, this was after an interview. Um, I didn't get it. So I reached out to the recruiter and the recruiter scheduled a call with me to let me know okay, these are the things I did wrong and these are the reasons that disqualified me. And I used that to improve myself. Fantastic. So don't yeah. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to reach out to find out the reason why you didn't succeed in something because you never know the response you might get and how that response might help you in the next time you apply for something. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's only a failure if you if you view it that way, if you reframe it exactly. as a learning experience, then you're going to get the most from it. And it's actually going to be a stepping stone and helpful for your uh, 
to reach your goal in the end. So yeah, totally agree with you there, Any Great, great advice. Okay, that's it from us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just want to say big thank you to NCCU North Central University. Jump on Google if you are interested in studying there. They helped us organize this interview and a massive thanks to Inni as well for helping us, uh, for, for jumping online and for telling us about his experience and not just, you know, studying at NCCU, but his career, uh, his how he got the job he wanted, his life abroad and how he survived. So that's been an absolute um gold thank you so much there Inny. and just thank one last thing to you're welcome you're welcome sir and if you're still struggling with the ielts exam then please get in contact join us at ieltspodcast.com thank you very much ielts podcast.com